So in React, when mapping over things, there is one question that is super important to ask yourself. And that is, how many entries will I allow at maximum? Because if you're mapping over database entries and do not set a limit on how many are at maximum displayed, there is a good chance you're completely gonna blow up your user interface with way too many entries that any user could handle. And you know what's one of the best ways to handle that? It's pagination and infinite scrolling. And especially infinite scrolling is super cool for users. It's a great user experience because as you scroll, more entries are loaded based on where the user currently is and how much is visible to the user. You never fetch more data than you need to. It reduces the strain on the network requests for the user. It makes for an amazing user experience. And here is the cleanest implementation of infinite scrolling I have ever seen. And adding infinite scrolling is a two-step process. First off, we need a basic pagination implementation that allows us to switch between certain pages. And then secondly, we're gonna take that and make it scroll based, which is a pretty easy step. This is what we're gonna build and let's build the pagination approach first. So we're here inside of a page and let's build the pagination first as step one and then make it scroll based. The way we built the pagination is first off turning this into a client component. I'm only adding this because I'm working in Next.js, but there's nothing Next.js specific about this. So this works just fine in any React component. And then we want to import a use infinite query from TanStack React Query, which is gonna make this super simple and very, very enjoyable to implement. Then the posts I'm gonna use as an example are gonna contain an ID and a title, and we're gonna have six of these for now. You could add any amount you want. That's the whole point, right? You can have vast amounts of data, but we're only gonna show so many at a time. And for me, that's gonna be two at a time. You're gonna see that here in a second. And then we're gonna mock a database fetch, just so it's way easier for you to see what is going on. This function is called fetch post and we're gonna pass it a page number. And then inside of here, we're gonna mock a database delay of one second. And then what we want to return are the posts for the page we're currently on, this right here. And then how many posts we want to return. In my case, that's gonna be two. Great, then let's get started in the actual page after we've mocked out the database call by using the infinite query. First thing we're gonna pass it is the array right here, the query key. Um, this could be anything you want. I just called it query. It's just a unique identifier for this hook. And then we can destructure three things from here. We can destructure way more, but we only need three. That is the data that we get back from the database, a function fetch next page to fetch the next page. And lastly, a Boolean whether we are currently fetching the net next page or not. And that's all we need. Then let's implement the actual query as the page param. This is the current page we're on. We initially want to pass one because we're on the first page. And and then we're only getting the data from the function fetch posts up here that we mocked out, where we mock the database call and returning that response. As we know, each post has an ID and a title, and we get back an array of those. And lastly, we want to define two more things in the second object that we pass to the use infinite query. And what this does, we can see what this does if we hover over it. This function can be set to automatically get the next cursor for, and that's important, infinite queries. So we can now perform infinite queries by returning the pages.length plus one, however many pages those are. And then secondly, we want to pass some initial data to this. For example, you can initially fetch two posts. That's what I like to do because if you want to go to the page, there should already be some posts there before you fetch more in the infinite scrolling. That's what we pass in here, just the first two posts and then the first page as the page params. And that's our use infinite query done. The whole logic all done. And now we can actually get to the JSX declare the posts right here or what we're showing and then mapping over the data that we get back, which is initially the first two posts. And then as we scroll later on or click the button of add more, then more posts are gonna be put into this data right here into the pages that we're mapping over. And then secondly, we want a button. And the important thing is if we click this button, we're gonna fetch the next page information. So the next two posts, and we want to disable this button if we are currently fetching the next page. And that is the implementation done. Let's take a look at what this looks like. If I reload this page, we can see initially there are the two posts that we passed to the initial data. And if I click load more, check this out. It says loading more, and then it shows us the next two posts. So what exactly is happening? We can see right here. If I click the button, this page param right here is gonna be two because technically we are on the second page 
and we don't care if we show them left and right or beneath one another as we are. So we're fetching the posts for the second page, meaning right here we're gonna get the third and the fourth post back from the array we have declared right up here the mocked out posts. That's what's happening. And this happens recursively. That's the important part. So if I hit load more again, it's not going to give us the third and fourth post again. Obviously, it's going to give us the next two. And then it's going to know there is nothing more to load because we only have six posts. We're returning two posts per call. So that makes three pages. And the button knows Right here, if we are on more than three pages rendered out, then I'm gonna show nothing more to load because there is nothing more to load. This is a beautiful implementation of pagination. We can show more posts as we click load more and they're actually only fetched from the database once that happens and not before, reducing load on the client side. Perfect, so we've done implementation step one, basic pagination, we can put a check mark on that. And now let's turn it into something scroll based. That means if we are right here and every post takes up a little bit more space than it currently does on the screen, as we scroll, instead of clicking the load more button, we then want to show more posts beneath them. Take a look at how this will work conceptually. So if this were the posts, right, this, this is going to be post one, this is post, oops, post two, and this is going to be post three. And let's say the viewport was the following. Let's make the viewport red. This is what the user sees, okay? And as we are scrolling, the viewport moves down. And when do we want to fetch, let's say, the fourth post, right? Let's put that down here. When do we want to fetch that? We want to fetch this fourth post only when the third post has reached the bottom of the viewport, when it's in full view and it's at the bottom. Only then, as the user is scrolling down, now we want to fetch the fourth post and not before that. Because if the user never scrolls to post three, why would we ever want to fetch post four? It wouldn't make sense. It would put additional strain on the client. So there would be no point in fetching the post four unless we already see the third post. And to achieve that, what we're gonna do is attach a listener to the last post, whatever that currently is. So that might be post three. If the user scrolls down even further, that might be post four. We always want to have a listener on the last post to see if it is intersecting with the viewport, if it's in view to the user. Now we could manually do that with the intersection observer API, or we could install a very handy dependency that does all the lifting for us. And that is gonna be called at manteen slash hooks. It's a hook library for React and we want to say yarn add or npm install that package. And that is gonna make working with the intersection API so much easier than it is inside of, you know, doing it yourself with a use effect and so on. Okay, we've installed the dependency and let's change one or two things about our code to make this work. First off, what we want to do is declare a const last post and I'm gonna disable GitHub Copilot for this ref. So we're gonna create a reference to a certain DOM node that is gonna be the last post we have. And this is gonna be a use ref, a hook we get from React Go ahead and import that. And by default, this is going to be null. But if you're in TypeScript, we can type this out already as an HTML element. We can pass that as a generic to the use ref and now we can assign the ref. And secondly, this is why we installed the manteen hook. We can say um, cons, and we're gonna worry about the destruction later, is gonna be equal to use intersection a very convenient hook we get from Mantine hooks that we can pass one, the root element. This is gonna be our last postref.current, the actual reference to a certain DOM node. And then secondly, a threshold, and this threshold is just going to be one. Now what we can do is to structure the actual ref that we can pass into our JSX element. And then secondly, the entry that we can check on if we are currently intersecting with the viewport or not. And if we are intersecting, so if entry dot is intersecting, that is a boolean we can check on the entry, then we want to fetch the next page, the method we get from the tan stack helper we have used way up here, the use infinite query. Then we want to actually fetch the next page information. And I'd say before assigning this reference right here, the ref to the last post, let's actually simplify how we render out our JSX really quick, because there is a little cleaner approach to do this. Let's say const posts is gonna be equal to, and then data, and the data is optional, dot 
pages. There are only two properties on the data. And now let's do a flat map. And what the flat map does for us is one, it maps over and two, it flattens at the same time, which is a bit more performant than doing both separately. And for each page that we get, we want to return that page content. And let's call this underscore post because otherwise we would get a naming conflict with the mocked out posts that we have declared right at the top up here. We don't want that. We can avoid that by just using an underscore. And then instead of having this whole JSX block right here, how about we just map over the underscore posts. And for each post, we can then render out the JSX that we want. For example, a div element. And just like that, we have kind of eased the JSX burden. It just looks cleaner this way instead of doing it the other way. And now for the important part, actually attaching the ref to the last post. Let's see how we can do that. And it's pretty straightforward. If we are on the last post, we can determine that by the index, by the way. If the current index that we're at is triple equal to the underscore posts, the data we're mapping over dot length, then we want to return something different, right? We, in that case, we want to return essentially a very similar thing, but the only difference is gonna be that we are attaching the ref to this. So this right here states, if we are on the last index, if we're on the last post, then we're gonna create a div um, with a reference on it and else not. And we also want to return that. Awesome, let's give both of these divs a key so we don't get any error and the key can be the post.id because that is unique and that is all we need to do. Map over the post, check if we're on the last post and if we are, attach a ref to it. Oh, by the way, this right here, the if entry dot is intersecting needs to go inside of a use effect um, because we want to break out of the regular behavior of React and we want to check for this every time the entry changes and only if that changes, then we want to display more posts. Great, so then let's render out the actual post title so we can see what is going on because currently we are just displaying an empty div. Let's say post.title inside of the div and we will be able to see the posts. Let's reload this. And interesting, it fetches all the posts. Why is that? Well, that is because all the posts are currently within our viewport. So for every post that is reloaded, it is immediately fetching more posts, which is not what we want. So the remedy is to give each div a little bit of height. So for example, let's give this a height of 80 and a background of white and a text of black so we can see what this looks like. The posts are gonna be substantially bigger now and only when it's intersecting with our viewport are most more posts gonna be loaded. Let me reload the page and you will be able to see that on the scroll bar. So initially the first four are, go are going to be loaded because also the second one intersects with our viewport. And then check the scroll bar on the right side right here. If I scroll down, only then are more posts actually being fetched like the fifth and the sixth. And then nothing more to load after all the posts from our database have been loaded. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, chances are you're really gonna enjoy my favorite way of fetching data in React. You can check it out right here. It's an amazing video. And then I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.